We're going to kick off today with a story, well, that stuff started by publishing a glowing review of a poem which is going to be performed in dramatic form on Thursday night at the Auckland Arts Festival, which kicks off today. And I wish the Auckland Arts Festival is a supporter of the arts well. But there is one problem with the Auckland Arts Festival, and that is on Thursday night, uh, a poem uh, is going to be dramatised, amongst other, the work of uh, a woman who has written about the 250th anniversary of James Cook's arrival in New Zealand. Uh, Tusiata Avia has written the poem. She is a member of the Order of Merit of New Zealand, which is quite a high honour, and she has spent almost her entire life being funded by the government through arts grants and various other liberal scholarships and such. The problem with the poem is that by a universal review, it is racist and it incites particularly young women of colour or young brown women to cruise the streets in an SUV looking for white men to stick with pig knives and kill. That's basically, I've taken out all the nice iambic pentameter, but that's basically what this poem says. Now, stuff ran it. We talked about it and, you know, we had to breach probably some broadcasting standards to play the poem on air. And your reaction and the reaction that then spread to other media has been overwhelming, that this is a racist poem. It has prompted more than 60 complaints, I imagine up to 70, maybe 100 by now, to the Human Rights Commission or the Race Relations Commissioner who was part of the Human Rights Commission. His name is Meng Foon, the Human Rights Commissioner is Paul Hunt. And in response to those 60, 70, maybe now 100 complaints, with this play due to be performed at a government-funded arts festival on Thursday night, the response from the Human Rights Commission has been nothing, except to refuse all interviews to us and say that they are considering or having some legal review of the poem. This is from a human uh, rights and a race relations conciliator who is happy to call out what he perceives to be white on black racism or racism against people of colour at the drop of a hat with no legal consideration whatsoever. But Meng Foon is remarkably silent on this, as is Paul Hunt. The other people who have been silent on this, the Culture and Heritage Minister who funds it with your tax dollar, Willow Jean Prime, Stephen Wainwright, who is the Chief Executive of Creative New Zealand, which funnels the money from you to people like Tusiata Avia. Uh, Siobhan, uh, uh, what's her name, Caroline? Siobhan Caroline, she is the Story Prevention Officer, sorry, the Media Relations Officer at the Auckland Arts Festival, and they have nothing to say, though they are busy running around on social media saying, what a wonderful show, it's almost sold out Dubai tickets. So basically, officially, nothing. This piece of racism seems to be going uncommented. One person who is prepared to talk about it is the leader of the New Zealand First Party, Winston Peters, and he joins us uh, by video link now. Uh, Winston, uh, welcome back to the platform. Good morning. Uh, have you read the poem? No, I haven't read the poem. I've read all about it, but I've not read the poem. I don't intend to read that doggle and that rubbish because that's what it is, and my concern is that the taxpayer has been paying for it. And this comes at the very same time as that terrible death happened in Auckland, where a 14 and 17 year old stabbed a man to death after a minor traffic accident. This is awful stuff at the moment, and it shows that in some ways our country is going mad quickly. Are you saying the two events are linked, or we might say one is causative? Well, the fact is, when you're prepared to say that sort of thing, running around with big knives to stab people, as though it's justified on your uh, analysis of history uh, with respect to Captain Cook and his ancestors, who are, have, don't happen to be us, because many of us are not English in our background. We are Scottish or Maori or something else. So you've got all this linked in mindless uh, sort of latent sense of nationalism coming from somebody who herself is not a native New Zealander in that context, rammed down our throat and being paid for by the taxpayer. Mm. It is a waste of our time. Look, I'm from freedom of speech, but when you're inciting people to violence of this type, that's something else.
Mm. Uh, Winston, that, that's an interesting thing. You raised the issue of freedom of speech because some Liberals have tried to hide this poem uh, and the fact that it's been written and has been performed behind freedom of speech. A and I guess many people are saying you can write a poem like this but you can take the responsibility for the fact that it is racist and under our current hate speech laws, less, let alone the nutty ones that, that Labor want to bring in, it would be illegal. And it seems to me it's taken the Human Rights Commission an awful long time to reach a conclusion that most right-thinking New Zealanders can come to within 30 seconds. That's extraordinary because you, this is very stark. It's blunt. Uh, this um, dialogue in the form of a poem, so to speak, and that might be an expression of absolute liberality as well, it does incite people to commit this sort of violence of the worst type, for example. Not to snub people or give them, show them a middle finger or something. No, go out and murder them. And we should not be uh, in any way tolerating the taxpayer subsidy for the pronouncement and advocacy of that sort of behaviour. It's that simple. Okay. And I cannot understand why those who are in charge of so-called standards don't seem to realise how massively the standards are being breached here. Mm. And if they're going to go to a um, arts council um, or an arts function this week, well, frankly, it shows you how barren and deserted our country has become of this sort of quality if that is the best thing they can put up. All right. Look, uh, I guess the other thing is, does this send a message, and I'm sorry, I can now only put the level of non-engagement we have had in an official level from everyone involved in this on the government side, as I said, Willow Jean Prime, Creative New Zealand, the Arts Festival, all flat batting this, when it is clearly, you know, the moment that this is really going to be promulgated is coming. Is this in danger of and you might say it was already had no reputation, of damaging the reputation of our Human Rights Commission, which would appear to me to be saying that racism is a one-way street. Well, it's not a case of damaging it. It has been seriously damaged in the past because of its lack of neutrality as to what is something that's offensive in terms of race relations. But in this case, it's not so much the poem itself. It's who it might incite. It's what sort of mind it might justify to go on and commit murder, not just once, but a number of times. That's where these things lead up to in the end. And there's no reason, and it's the authorities washing their hands of it, they will have been responsible for allowing that sort of uh, mind-changing information to get into the wrong mind, so to speak. Mm. That's how most terrorism yeah. does happen. It also seems strange to me that there's got to be this legal process with 60 or 70 complaints. I can remember, I think, when you were in government last and I think Shane Jones was discussing immigration policy and Indian people and at the drop of a hat, Ming Foon was coming out calling him and New Zealand first racist. Well, I remember that as well. And look, don't get me wrong, I thought Ming was a fine, fine mayor of Gisborne. He did a great job in many ways. But this is a, 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 where the rubber meets the road, so to speak, on the position that you've got to take. And it's one of leadership. This is unbalanced, it's unfair. I'm utterly for free speech. I get so offended by all those woke people out there who don't like this. So if you don't agree with them, they want to cancel you out. This is wrong. But there's one, one thing different about this speech. It is encouraging murder. That's yeah. how blunt it is. Yeah, it is uh, encouraging murder. So Winston, your message, if you had one, to Willow Jean Prime or Stephen Wainwright or, or the people at the Auckland Arts Festival, what would you ask them to do? And the Human well, Rights Willow, Commission. Uh, well, in Willow's case, Willow, if you don't find something wrong with this, then why are you in the job? Why don't you resign? Because you don't know what you're doing. And when it comes to the Human Rights Commission, it's right to ask. Nobody's above challenge. Nobody should be uh, against uh, being asked, well, shouldn't this or that happen? Because it's called accountability. It's all called, called transparency. But as for the art people, well, no, that's something else. Because in this country, all sorts of things pose as art. And most of it, and much of it, is unadulterated to make it dog rule. Yeah. And while I've got you here, and we're talking about what is art and what's performance or not, what do you think of drag shows in public libraries? Drag queens uh, reading stories to kids. Well, it's ridiculous. It's terrible. And what you've got here is 
people without any authority from the parents, who after all should know what the kid's going to be hearing next, without any consultation, just ramming it down our throat. Well, I have something. to correct you there, Winston. These things are advertised as drag queen story times, so parents can choose to bring their kids alone. It's not like they're just, well, I hope they're not just popping up in schools unannounced. Well, a lot of parents did not know what was happening next. Ah. But that's not I mean, everything is happening at the moment. And For example, an older lady I know came, was in open hospital the other day and found out the card, so this is a European person, has her name and under it, Wahine, right? Yeah. This is the language about 5% of the country speak with any proficiency and 95% don't. But then at the open hospital, everything up there is in Maori first. Even terms and systems that are about saving lives have it in Maori, the Maori pictures, the Maori imagery. And if you can't follow that, just too bad. Yeah. Now, where is, who is deciding all this stuff and how they're getting away with it? And I have to tell your audience, I'm, I'm sure you tell them every day, you've got to get off your backside and do something about it. Yeah. Uh, Winston, one other thing, just looping back to the poem, Adi Savi are facing a Sansa judicial hearing for doing that, uh, doing the, the slit throat thing. Um, in a game on Friday night, he, gentleman that Artie is, immediately apologised, recognised he'd done wrong. It seems ironic to me, I mean, if he said he was an artist, maybe he would have got away with it, Winston. That, <laughs> and that, to me, was the double standard when I linked the two together. Well, he is an artist on the football paddock, but yeah. let me tell you, uh, he's apologised, that's enough. Yeah. Because you remember when that haka has been changed out, but when the latest version of the haka came out a few years ago, that was at the end of the haka. Yeah, yeah that's right. Like, that's the haka. Stop it. So, you know, he was around at the time when they actually did that. Yeah. And he just wanted in the, in the, the paddock, on the paddock, at a moment when he's getting sent off the paddock, I might add as well. Yeah. Because he was yeah. uh, went too far. He apologised. And sometimes when you apologise, that's enough. It's a bit like Rob Campbell. He did apologise, you know. <laughs> but apparently apologies... These days aren't worth anything. Yeah. Um, should Tusiata Avia apologise for her poem? And should um, oh. Willow Jean Pone, Steve Rainwright and the Auckland Arts Festival apologise for paying for it? Look, the real problem is that we are giving it the oxygen of respectability by discussing it that it does not deserve. This is rubbish. Their performance is rubbish. The whole lot's a waste of everybody's time. But, uh, you know, we're calling it out and fair enough. Yep. Winston, I thank you very much indeed for your time this morning. I'm sure that will add, well, fuel to the debate, the necessary debate we're having on uh, this Captain Cook poem. Win Winston Peters there, the leader of uh, New Zealand First. What did you make of what he had to say? And do you think that there needs to be some sort of statement, folks, from the Human Rights Commission before this play is performed in dramatic form which I'm sure was all paid for by you on Thursday night at the Arts Festival.